Are you ready to transform your machine learning projects from experiments to scalable production ready system? Imagine harnessing the power of AWS to automate and secure your machine learning pipelines with ease. Well, in this video, we'll jumpstart your MLOps journey on AWS by unlocking the secrets to building a robust and efficient AI solution. So let's dive right in and let's get started. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining in and welcome to AI and MLOps Growth Rituals. It's a daily dose of learning for you to progress in your learning journey. I hope you're all excited for our upcoming workshop that is on tomorrow. So in that workshop, I'll take you through in depth about how exactly that you can progress in this MLOps domain. But as I've mentioned already, this is our AI and MLOps Growth Rituals where it's conducted to help you to ensure that I'll be there with you when you're taking that first step and so that you can progress in your MLOps journey. So let's get started, guys. So the topic of today's session is MLOps on cloud. First of all, when we say MLOps, it's about applying the DevOps principles on the machine learning project. And that's the simplest way of explaining the MLOps. Now, in performing this MLOps at the enterprise level, in most of the scenarios, we make use of the cloud. That is, the public cloud that's available. We make use of the various services that are provided by these public cloud so that we can realize the end-to-end -end deployment process of these machine learning project. Now, one such cloud that we have got is an AWS, that is Amazon Web Services. And as part of today's session, I'll take you through at a very high level, what are the services that we generally utilize when we are performing the MLOps on AWS? So let's get started, guys. So here, I'm going to categorize these MLOps components into the various elements. And then for each element, I'll mention what are the services that we generally use. So let's get started, guys. So first thing is, whenever we are working in the machine learning project, so you might have seen me explaining in the earlier sessions too. So when we are working with the machine learning project, the first thing is working with the data set. That means we get the data from various sources and we, we utilize such data in applying the machine learning so that we can learn the patterns which is present inside that data. Now to process such data in an efficient manner, we have various services in AWS. To name a few, we have the one of the most commonly used service that's called as AWS Glue. Now, this AWS Glue is generally used as a data engineering component service. Now, using this, we can go ahead and like start cataloging the data and build the ETL job that is extract, transform, and loading the job so that we can prepare the data for analytics. Now, apart from this service, we also have the other service which is integrated inside this Amazon SageMaker AI. Now, Amazon SageMaker AI is a suite of services which will help us to apply the machine learning and implement the MLOps using the AWS. Now, here, even in the, under this AWS SageMaker AI. So what we have got is in order to prepare the data, we have a canvas, which is an, another tool that we have got. And then there's one more tool that's called as a data wrangler. I'll show you how you can access it. So in the Amazon SageMaker Studio, we have something, we have something known as the data wrangler the data wrangler and the canvas. So these are the other tools that we generally use it in order to prepare the data. We get the data from various sources and in order to prepare the data for machine learning, we make use of these tools. It can be the data engineering tools such as AWS Glue, or it can be the machine learning based services that we have got in SageMaker AI, that is canvas or the data wrangler. Now, once we get the data, so generally what we do is as a machine learning engineer, we'll conduct the experiment 
by running the various algorithms. Now, when we are doing such activity that is applying the various algorithm on this given data set, and when we want to track such experiment, here in the Amazon that is in this AWS, we have the under the experiment, you can see that we have MLflow. We can use this MLflow track experiments and MLflow tracking server in order to track the experiments that we are conducting in the SageMaker environment. And we can log such experiment with the help of this MLflow. So that means the MLflow is a tool. It's not just intended only for local. It can, it actually works even at the cloud level as well. Okay, so this is about the experiment section. Now, apart from that, in implementing the MLOps and, and to complete the overall process of getting the data and applying the algorithm and even deploying it, we have one more service that's called as AutoML, where we can automatically train and tune machine learning models. And in order to do this, we actually run this in the canvas. So we actually run it in the canvas which is the another service that I've highlighted already, where it's a no code environment, we'll just go ahead and present the data, choose the algorithm, and we evaluate it and we can deploy it in the single screen. And this is how we can track the experiments. Now, once the model has been trained, and once we log the experiment, now, if you are satisfied, and we want to, in most of the scenarios, I want to save the version of the model as well. In order to save the version of the model, so what we would be using is just like the MLflow model registry inside the SageMaker, in order to version the machine learning models that we have got, we have the SageMaker model registry. Now in the SageMaker model registry, whatever the models that we'll be building, so we'll be able to see its version, and we can go ahead and apply the various steps such as deployment so that we can automate the deployment. So to recap, we have learned about how to, we can process the data in order to process it. We make use of the services, the data engineering services like AWS Glue. And once we process the data and, and even we also have these other services such as the Canvas, which will basically help us in working with the data and applying the algorithm on the same. And then we have also looked into the other tools such as the model registry in order to save the model. And in order to track the experiment, we have also seen that we have the integration with MLflow. We're using this, we can actually integrate our experiments. Okay. Next comes is how can we implement the continuous integration, continuous training, and the continuous deployment. Here, in order to implement, if I want to just implement the continuous integration and the continuous deployment, so we can actually make use of the traditional process that is code pipeline. So we can make use of the traditional process of this code pipeline, where using this code pipeline service, I can go ahead and use the already trained model. Let's assume that I've got a trained model in my S3 bucket or in some location, and I've got my source code in my GitHub repository. I'll use this combination and we can actually perform the build where we can build the container images, perform the testing, and finally we can perform the deployment on the required compute. Now this is one way of implementing the continuous integration and the continuous deployment. Now, as the organization matures, in most of the cases, let's say we also want to implement the continuous training. That means I want to have a repeatable automated way to perform the training, perform the testing, and then maybe I want to build it. Then what will be build and even to deploy it, then in such scenario, what we'll be using is in such maturity of MLOps, we make use of another feature that we have got that's called as a pipeline. It's a visual interface, which we can work inside this SageMaker. 
I can create it with the help of a visual editor, or we can write the code as well. Here, we can define the sequence of steps that needs to happen when we are working with this complex machine learning pipeline. Now this MLOps, this SageMaker pipeline can also be integrated with the existing tools that is code pipeline and the other services where we can send in the input and trigger such pipeline and get the status and even increase or the like add an automation on top of it. So this is what we'll be generally implementing as the organization matures in the MLOps. Now, once the model has been trained and we are able to replicate the experiment and we now have deployed it, okay? During the deployment, so we generally have two types of inferences. We have the, like what we have is the batch inference and we also have a real-time inference. Batch inference is a scenario where I'll get a batch of data and I'll generate the prediction on top of it. And we have a real-time inference where for individual row, I'll be getting a response for the individual row, the real time. So the SageMaker supports both the kinds of deployment. Now, once the model has been deployed, the next thing comes is the model monitoring. Now, in order to implement the model monitoring, we have various services that are available inside the Amazon SageMaker. This monitoring can be set up under the governance aspect of the SageMaker AI. I'll just take you through with an example. This is an example where I have created a model and have set up the monitoring of the data quality. And this model has been deployed on a specific endpoint. And this is the model name and it has been scheduled for monitoring the quality of the data. And this is a schedule. Now, what is the benefit of this? Okay, the benefit of this is by having this kind of monitoring, we can actually go ahead and check, uh, like we can actually go ahead and check whether there are issues in our code that we have created, or is there any fixes that is required? Or if let's say, for example, I think it looks like it got executed. Let's have a quick view if we have anything. So overall, okay. So overall, the monitoring aspect over here, we can set up the model monitoring with the help of SageMaker monitor, where we can check the endpoint and, and look into the existing data and see what kind of data that we are receiving and compare it against our training data set and check whether there is an issue and whether we are having the issue in the data quality and we can check for data drift or a model drift. And if that happens, we can schedule a notification to our development team or the data science team so that we can implement the overall CI, CD, CT, including the CT that is continuous training, continuous integration, continuous deployment, including the monitoring setup. Now, once uh, this entire thing has been set up. So the data science team can review the model performance over there as the time progresses and take the necessary action. It can be as simple as retraining or refreshing our training data so that we can perform the scheduled retraining every, uh, let's say monthly or weekly, depending on the kind of data and the business that we are dealing with. So this is the overall idea at a very high level about how we can actually work and implement the MLOps at the AWS cloud. Okay, now here, apart from these, I also want to share a few more things as well. If you open up the SageMaker AI, we can also see the ground truth. Now this is the ground truth is a service where we can use it for labeling the data. That means when during the data preparation, it is used by the business team and the data science team. And we have processing job over here under this processing job. We use this to process the data. Okay. And we have algorithms. If I have any algorithms that I've manually created, it will be available. If, to, if I have performed any training, I can see it under the training jobs. And if there is any hyperparameter tuning during the experimentation, so this is the hyperparameter tuning section. 
So likewise, this SageMaker AI is uh, consisting of suit of tools that will be helpful for everyone in the team, including the data science team and the ML ops team. All right, guys. So this was about a quick high level idea about this, the ML ops on AWS. I want to know from you as uh, like, have you implemented the ML ops using the AWS cloud? And if yes, what were the services that you have explored? So folks, I can't wait to see you on our tomorrow session. Tomorrow session is a workshop. So where we'll go in depth about, uh, like we'll start from scratch and we'll I'll take you through what exactly is ML ops in a step-by-step -step manner. I hope you had fun learning in this video. So folks, if you want to join live from the next session, just check out the link that is provided in the description. Join our community. And I can't wait to help you in your MLOps and Generative AI journey. Take care, guys, and I'll see you next time.